that's good. I'm at General Synod where the 476 members, many of them newly elected, are debating issues such as the Covenant and Big Society. But today one of the main news items has been the removal from his ministry of Bishop Pete Broadbent after he rather unwisely made some comments about the royal wedding on his Facebook page. He predicted the marriage wouldn't last more than seven years and was viscerally critical of the gutter press. But I've been speaking to Synod members today and there's a surprising amount of support for Bishop Pete. Most people think he has been treated a little bit too harshly. Um, admittedly, when I read his comments on Sunday, I, I was quite taken aback uh, by them. Um, I then subsequently realised that he apologised for them, and he, uh, in a sense, took back what he said. Um, I think Bishop Peter is quite open about his own position, um, and uh, I think, given his own position, his views matched what he what he thought. Um, I, I had only heard today that he has been asked to uh, withdraw from public ministry, uh, and uh, I, I do think that's quite quite harsh. But I suppose, given the uh, context and given the, the way in which he uh, made those comments public through an internet forum, I suppose it's understandable that the Bishop of London asked him to. To withdraw. Well, I hope it's a very, very temporary punishment, and I, I'm kind of sorry to see him um, disciplined publicly in this way. Because if you read the Facebook entry, I understand it's really having a go at the journalists far more than at the monarchy, and it, it was indiscreet and unwise. Um, but he's an awfully good bishop, and we do need him in the church, and we, know, and we need him in public ministry. So I hope this is over very quickly. Do you think if it had been about anybody but the royal family that he would have suffered the same penalty? I wouldn't say that, so. um, and, and in a sense, the royal family does need supporting, and I recognise that. And we are the Church of England, and this is a constitutional monarch. Um, but the, there are sometimes the border, the, the, the line that we draw between what we say and what we think um, has to be drawn more firmly. I think in answer to the question, no, probably. Unless he'd done um, rubbish to someone in a very high position for a lot of power. And what can you say in support of his ministry? Why is he such a good bishop? He's a good bishop because he understands people, both clergy and laity, um, in diocese. And actually he's a caretaker. Uh, he looks after people, he's empathetic and sympathetic. And, um, and he goes with people who are struggling in a whole range of different kinds of ways. And, and it's not an establishment kind of figure. You know, he's got that kind of bias to him, if you like. Um, and I think this was unwise, but I'm just so sad to see him uh, publicly disappear in this way. It's a great pity about Pete Broadbent. He's always spoken his mind, and I don't always agree with him. But um, perhaps a little bit more tact this time. But it's a shame because there's a lot of good in Pete, and uh, it needs encouraging. Were you surprised that he was actually um, suspended in effect? Yes, I was, because um, you know I can think of things, worse things that other people have done, and they haven't been suspended. Don't ask me to quote; I can't remember. But <laughs> We were very surprised that the Bishop of London has asked this of him. Uh, Pete is a very popular candidate at General Synod and very widely respected. I think everybody's surprised that he's made the gaffe that he has made, but it's not typical of him. Uh, I just hope that it's not a, a full suspension, but actually just a sort of a temporary thing, which will and he'll be come back refreshed and perhaps chastened in a few weeks' time to continue his very good and important work. Do you think that this is a view widely held on Synod? I would have thought so, because most of the people I've spoken to who have heard the news were surprised that this has happened. Um, do you think that the, is this a threat in any way to the tradition of free speech? No, it's not. Um, a general Synod knows its rights on free speech. This is not so much about free speech. This is about poor decision-making uh, at an inappropriate time. And also it's about the use of Facebook and who gets to see it. It's just somebody who's very, very busy. Uh, who's just actually made a very serious, silly mistake. And the poor decision-making being Bishop Pete or the Bishop of London? Uh, well, obviously Bishop Pete, first of all, really shouldn't have said that, even if he thought it. Uh, but I don't think, because I don't know the full why the Bishop of London has done this, it may just be that he feels that Pete Pete needs a bit of a rest. Peace be with you. And also with you. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and no
parliamentary processes can have a negative effect, tending to polarise issues, parties divided against one another, and a culture of winners and losers. How often, in synod debates, it seems that there are party speeches, little attempt to see where others are coming from. No real engagement with what others have just said. No transformative conversations which seek to discover what is gospel news in it. I hope Rabbi will excuse the intrusion 